Hey everybody, this is Andrew here with the Tower E-Bike Repair Shop. And today we're gonna to be talking about belt drive versus chain drive system on your e-bike and which is better, what are the pros, what are the cons? So in front of me, I have two separate bikes. I have the Electric Experience V1 folding bike and then I have a Priority Current e-bike. Electric Experience has a traditional chain drive system where the Priority has a belt drive system. So let's check out a little bit of what they look like and some of the features on them. So I'm gonna head down to this Priority Current first. So if we look down, we can see we have the belt here. Now this is made by Gates, their carbon belt drive system. So it's very high quality. As you can see, it's very tight and taut. Now you do have to make sure that the tension on these is good. Most of the time when a bike comes with a, uh, a belt here, you'll have some horizontal dropouts that'll help you, you know, set up that chain tension. And then of course, these belt drives do require special rear cogs that do have specially designed teeth to grip onto these belts. You can see it on the, on the front and the back here. Then of course it is paired with the internally geared hub. That's the belt drive. We're gonna shimmy over to the electric experience. Now this is probably, you know, what you're used to seeing on a bicycle where we have this rear freewheel or cassette cluster. We have a regular bike train that loops through them. And then we have an external derailleur that moves the chain onto the different speeds. So we're all familiar with this one. I won't go too in depth with uh, what it looks like. Now that we've checked those out, what are some of the awesome features? What are some of the not as good features? And which is better for you? So we'll start off with the pros of the belt drive. Now belt drives perform very, very well. They're nice and smooth, zero noise. And most of the time when a bike has a belt drive, they're usually pretty premium components. So premium components do feel a little bit nicer and you will definitely feel it while riding. One of the other really nice features of a belt drive is they're very low maintenance. You know, we're a regular bike chain. You have to lube it, clean it off, lube it, and then occasionally replace. These Gates belt drives require no lubing, no cleaning. They're basically just kind of self-sufficient until the teeth wear down or the belt itself breaks, which is usually many, many miles and many years into owning the bike. You add that, usually what's paired with these bikes, like I said, really nice components usually paired with them. You usually have either single speeds or some multi-geared internal hubs. Those internal hubs are really nice because unlike a regular bike, you don't have to be pedaling to change speeds. You can just live click, and the bike is ready to go because it works on cable tension instead of moving, you know, pushing a resistance in and out of the hub versus moving the chain up and down a cassette. You've heard all the positives. What are some negatives to these belt drives? In my opinion, the biggest negative to a belt drive is price. Belt drives are very, very pricey, especially when compared to a traditional drivetrain. Again, the performance is fantastic, but there is a pretty big entry point. Um, the belt, for example, if you do have to replace it, usually start somewhere around 60, 70 bucks, and they're not readily available absolutely everywhere. You can't roll into your local bike shop and expect them to just have one of these belts on hand like you can with a regular chain. More than likely, these belts are gonna have to be special ordered up. One of the other negatives is that internally geared hub. While it is a positive, there are also some drawbacks with them. One, with the parts that go with these hubs, aren't nearly as readily available as a traditional derailleur, shifter, or chain. To add to that, you also usually have to use kind of specialty parts with them. Where derailleurs, you can kind of mix and match shifters and brands to, to a certain extent. Typically with the internally geared stuff, you usually have to go with the same all the way through the system. And to add to that, again, usually these internally geared systems are a little bit on the pricey side. Performance is fantastic, but again, there is a bit of a price. And probably the last negative is there is, you know, as you have seen from some of our other videos, there is a little bit more complicated processes into uh, removing and working with an internally geared hub. Rear derailleurs, there's countless resources. They're very, very simple and easy to work on. Not to say that internally geared hubs are overly complicated, but there is a little bit more learning than goes into a traditional derailleur. So let's move on to a regular chain drive. So obviously the pros on this are parts are readily available. There are countless different brands and options bunches of online resources and the entry point on these is pretty inexpensive if your seven speed brakes there are bunches and bunches of different brands of derailleurs from nice brands to cummy bands and you can get your drivetrain rebuilt for not that much but you also have options which is another great point now some of the negatives to a traditional drivetrain system with a chain one is probably maintenance for most people you know that chain you always have to keep it clean and keep it lubed so it runs well on top of that the chains themselves typically wear out much faster than a belt so you will find yourself re replacing that chain much more often than a gates belt but again the chains are a little bit more readily available a little less expensive and then the final part is a traditional drivetrain is a little bit easier to work on compared to a belt drive that's for sure 
most people generally know how to do it. Now, which is right for you? You wanna ask yourself these questions, a little more of a personal decision. Belt drives are fantastic. A little bit of a high entry point. They are very well, but a traditional chain drive system works very well as well. What are your thoughts on the matter? What do you ride and what do you prefer? So thanks for joining us. Have a great day.